Hi, in this uh, lesson we are going to look at uh, working with APIs in the WSO2 API Manager. Uh, so in order to create uh, API proxies uh, in the WSO2 API Manager, we have the API Publisher. Uh, so uh, when you go to the API Publisher, there are three stages that you need to go through when it comes to uh, creating an API pro proxy and those stages are uh, design, implementation and the manage stage. So if you look at the design stage, uh, this uh, primarily consists of uh, 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 creating the interface of your API proxy that will be made available to the outside world. So this is what uh, invokers of your API proxy will see. So for example, you might be able to, you will create an HTTP resource uh, that's a get uh, called slash pet. So that will be what uh, will be seen on the outside. So next we move on to the implementation stage. Uh, so you might ask uh, since this is an API proxy uh, what exactly are we implementing here because all we are doing is fronting an actual API. Uh, so in the implementation stage uh, what we do is we actually uh, define what the endpoint is of the backend API. So uh, pretty much this allows the API proxy to forward any request that it receives to that appropriate uh, API which is at the back end. And also uh, at this particular stage we can do message mediation. Uh, so that would consist of uh, uh, message conversions or even message enrichment. So if we move on to the next stage which is the manage stage, uh, here we allow uh, associating various uh, throttling policies with a given API uh, proxy. And so this will define how the API proxy will behave when it's invoked uh, by outside users. And also we can also uh, define what are the uh, uh, fine grain access control for a given uh, API resource. So we can do this using uh, OAuth 2 scope. So this is also handled at this particular stage. Uh, next, uh, I want to talk about a concept that uh, API Manager has called API prototyping. So uh, if you're developing an API uh, from scratch uh, and you actually want to encourage uh, collaborative development between your own team that's developing the API and uh, application developers who will end up using your API. Uh, API Manager allows you to define API prototypes from the API publisher. Uh, so what you would do in this case is you will actually only start at the design, start at the design stage where, where you design the interface of your API uh, proxy and then uh, instead of uh, worrying about pointing to an actual API implementation which does not exist yet, uh, you can actually uh, uh, define what kind of response you want to be returned if a given API resource is invoked or you could even set up a mock backend that you want actually to, uh, to, uh, to, send, uh, to, to send responses to invocations that are received by your API proxy. And what you do is actually move the API into a prototype state. And so what this will do is it will enable uh, API uh, app developers to see your API proxy on the API store, but they can actually access it without subscribing to the API. So that means there is no access token involved. So this allows app developers to test their own applications uh, and develop it at the same time that your backend developers are developing APIs. So this allows both sides to uh, progress without a dependency on each other. So let's look at the uh, API lifecycle that is available for any API proxies that is created in the WS2 API Manager. So there are various states uh, in the API lifecycle and uh, they are the create, prototype, published, block, deprecated and retired states. So if we look at the uh, the first state of an API and uh, if we just explain it 
using just uh, the example of how you'd normally go about uh, creating and publishing an API. So initially, uh, you'll have a technical person who will actually design your uh, API proxy uh, and uh, actually point it to a given actual API uh, backend. Uh, so and save the API. So and when you save the API for the first time, it moves to the created state in the lifecycle. So just because it's in the created state, it does not mean that the API is accessible uh, to, to be invoked by external users. Uh, so as an alternative uh, to exposing the API that is in the created state, you could decide that you actually want to uh, have a prototype of your API running first, as I explained in uh, previously in order to enable app developers to collaboratively start developing their apps alongside your API backend. So you could, you have the alternative to move your API from the created state to the prototype state so that it becomes accessible to app developers. Uh, once your API is actually ready uh, to be used and a business person would come along and decide uh, when it, the right time it is to be exposed for uh, end users to start using it, uh, you, the API will move to the published state in the lifecycle. And this would mean that it becomes available on the API store so it's, uh, and so it's accessible to external users and they can also start invoking that API proxy as well. And uh, in addition to that, once you've got an API that is in published state, uh, and is, if you have an issue such as, for example, you've got a particular uh, API backend that is misbehaving for whatever reason, and you just want to temporarily uh, prevent external users from starting from invoking your API, you can actually move the API proxy to the blocked lifecycle state. And what we this will do is it will temporarily prevent the API proxy from being invocable from the outside world. Uh, so this is a temporary state that you can move your API into and you can move it back to the published state once uh, uh, whatever situation that had arise, ir arisen has been dealt with. And um, when we talk about APIs, it's natural for you to actually enhance and uh, improve your APIs. So in order to support this, uh, API manager has the concept of API versioning. So you are able to actually create a new version of your existing API proxy and uh, actually publish that new version, which will front your improved enhanced API. So when you do this, uh, you actually want to uh, encourage new users to start using your latest API version. So to do this, what uh, to make this uh, possible, uh, you have the option of deprecating your old API version. So uh, what this will do is uh, that a deprecated API proxy will no longer be accessible or visible to new users who come along. But existing users who already have access uh, to that uh, deprecated API because they've already subscribed to it previously, they will still be able to start able to use that API. Uh, so this way uh, existing users can uh, still use that API, the deprecated uh, version of your API until they finally migrate the applications to use the latest version of your API. So finally, when all your users have migrated the applications to start using your latest API version, you can actually retire your deprecated API. And so when it moves to the retired state of the life cycle, the API is no longer uh, visible to end users and no, it's no longer, no longer uh, invocable. So uh, let's also now look at the main 
user roles that are available out of the box in the API manager. So there are uh, uh, mainly three user roles that uh, are available out of the box and these are the API publisher, API creator and the API subscriber. So uh, the API creator role is the role that is required to actually uh, first actually design the API and actually uh, create the API for the first time. So this would, this role would usually be held by some by a technical person who is actually responsible for uh, design the interface and the implementation of that API. And the and uh, like we discussed in the uh, previous example, it is usually a business person with the authority to decide when an API should actually be exposed to the outside world. Uh, who will actually have the API publisher role. Uh, so that's why we have a differentiation between these two roles because it's usually divided between two different kinds of users. And finally, the API subscriber role is the role that is required for users to log into the API store, uh, subscribe and start using APIs. Uh, so that concludes uh, this lesson on working with APIs. Thank you.